Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the participants in the session, wherever you are, from wherever you have logged in. We are going to talk about the applying low code development to chain code to expedite the blockchain adoption. And uh, at, the, at, the, at the end of the session, we are also going to, to give, you, uh, give you a brief overview and a demo of uh, the blockchain app builder. Why we need, why we need a low code development solution? Now, low code development solution is increasingly a proven approach for improving productivity. If you if you think about the uh, low code development, where we all need to have the uh, we we need to enable the developers to have a low code development environment. It reduces the time to market. It enables the composable business strategies, and it enables the self service applications and democratization. Overall, it scales the business automation. We we all need to have a low code development solution. Yeah. Uh, for for why do we need for a low code solution with hyperledger fabric? In hyperledger fabric, we lack a uh, lack of skilled chain code developers, and uh, for for the lack of skilled uh, skilled chain code developers, we need uh, uh, we need a low code development environment. The lack of template, the lack of building blocks for the common use cases are uh, are, the, are the are the enforcing reason. To have the low code uh, solution. Overall, the complex infrastructure requirement also requires to have a low code environment for the developers. In the blockchain, we, we are addressing all these challenges through the blockchain app, app builder for Oracle blockchain platform. In the blockchain app builder comes up with this uh, six sp specific steps. The first step is to sp uh, specify the details in a specification file. The specification file is, uh, up, uh, is, is used to scaffold the project to generate the code. The, once the code is generated, we can add the custom methods on top of it. And once the custom methods are added, we can deploy the chain code locally or we can deploy it on the Oracle blockchain platform uh, cloud services. We can also do the testing and debugging of the smart contract very easily. We can also package and deploy the smart contract on the OBP itself. The blockchain app builder user interfaces look like this, where we are, it is easy to use its intuitive GUI delivered as the visual studio code so we we have okay <clears throat> all right so i'll continue actually it seems gaurav had some technical issue on his side as well so as gaurav was talking about that the blockchain app builder uh, is used to generate the chain code uh, and make it much easier to develop the chain code and entry to blockchain net establishing a blockchain application and blockchain network um, the one thing uh, that we are that uh, the hyperledger fabric lacks, and uh, there are a number of applications that are coming up on the blockchain network are uh, for the tokenization of uh, application. There are a number of applications out there like loyalty programs and royalty tracking and part and document tracking, etc., which can make use of tokenization. Hyperledger fabric infrastructure itself does not provide any support for token. It does not have any built-in one, but a number of applications have been developed that make use of tokens and those develops, uh, those applications generally emulate this ARC20 for fungible tokens and ARC721 for non-fungible tokens. Um, but there are no common building blocks and uh, some common building blocks are emerging for these kind of applications out there. So uh, what we are doing here is, 
Yes, and uh, so what we are doing with the blockchain app builder is we are in announcing the availability of tokenization support in a blockchain app builder as of today. In fact, if you go to the Oracle blockchain platform and you look under the console, you would see a new release there. And this new release of blockchain app builder supports generation of uh, code and APIs uh, based on token specification. The specification that you use is based on the uh, token taxonomy framework, TTF. We take the concept of definition and templates from TTF. And once you specify that in, in this spec file, you are going to uh, uh, say what kind of token type you need, whether fungible, non-fungible, etc. What is the property for this token? What are the behaviors that you want, transferable, vulnerable, and whatnot, and roles. Uh, in the current implementation, we are focusing on the fungible tokens only, and uh, very soon uh, we would be releasing support for non-fungible tokens as well. Uh, this is something in the work. Also for fungible tokens, as of now, we are using the account-based model. Uh, that's what we have implemented versus UTXO. We believe that account-based model is much more scalable as well as it uh, it's easier to program with. And uh, once we talk about the account-based model, of course, the, the immediate question might be that, uh, what about MVCC errors that you see? We are also working on a solution for MVCC error uh, uh, to not limit the throughput, make it really scalable. So that we would be talking more about what the solution we are uh, putting together in Hyperledger Fabric itself uh, to avoid those MVCC errors with account-based model. So what do you do with the, the spec file? Uh, you create a spec file like uh, like this, so you see on the right, right hand side. So basically token becomes another asset in the spec file for the blockchain app builder. As Gaurav was talking about, there can be multiple assets uh, in this spec file. Uh, so token is another asset. Here you specify what the name of your token, uh, what's the type, whether it's a fractional fungible in this case behaviors, so a number of behaviors that are specified here, divisible, mintable, transferable, and so on, and then the roles. So, uh, um